exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. The North Carolina Tar Heels couldn't wait to meet the challenge of a new season. Their preparation would pay off in a tough bumping win over Southern Cal in the Pigskin Classic, starting the Heels on a three-game winning run. And for an instant, it looked like momentum and emotion would carry them past Florida State. But reality set in on Carolina in a 33-7 loss. In Raleigh, new coach Mike O'Kane got the NC State Wolfpack rolling on a measured pace with wins over Purdue and Wake Forest. O'Kane inherits from Dick Sheridan a five-game win streak against his arch rivals from Chapel Hill, a fact not lost on North Carolina as they ponder the importance of a rivalry that needs little fuel to ignite a classic football battle. It's North Carolina at NC State next. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents best in regional college football. The Atlantic Coast Conference. The Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Pepsi. Be young. Have fun. Drink Pepsi. By Delta Air with the industry's best overall record of passenger satisfaction, even business trips are a pleasure on Delta. By Lee Apparel. With regular, relaxed, and loose-fit jeans, Lee is the brand that fits. By your local Mazda dealers. By First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. On a great day. Welcome to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, where today Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you our Exxon ACC Game of the Week between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Wolfpack of NC State. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steve Martin, along with Jack Corrigan, and North Carolina comes in here after being in the national spotlight. It would have been fun to beat Florida State, but it didn't happen, and now the reality of this rivalry takes hold. And fortunately for North Carolina, the rivalry is something that will boost them back. They need that kind of emotion because they don't want to fall any farther behind in the standings between uh, Florida State and Virginia and, of course, NC State. They don't want to lose any more ground. Maybe the biggest concern for Mac Brown, however, is how his team will be physically physically today the toughest thing about last Saturday we spent a lot of emotion uh, we felt like the game got away from us a little bit in the second half and should have been closer than it was but the thing that happened last Saturday is physically we lost some good football players to practice this week and even some to the game when North Carolina opened up practice this week these six were doubtful but as the week progressed along this rivalry got closer only one is not going to answer the bell today it's amazing how a rivalry brings you back to health for NC State their biggest concern is being rusty after having the bye week Michael Kane's got a five game winning streak that he wants to preserve in this great rivalry I think ending the streak is tougher than keeping the streak going and uh, our players look forward to this game, yeah, and, and I'm not afraid to say it's a big game for us. It's a big game for our fans. It's a big game for our players. Our coaches enjoy this game. Um, it's what college football is all about, the rivalry, the intensity, the enthusiasm, and all the fun that goes into this type of football game. Big games mean big plays, and of course, big plays come from Bender and Goins, and we'll see them in action this afternoon. When we come back, Mike Hogwood will be back to talk about game breakers on both sides. The North Carolina State Wolfpack, they're 2-0 with wins over Purdue and Wake Forest, getting set for the third game of the season against the North Carolina Tar Heels, who are already four games deep into this season. And let's go to the sidelines right now to talk about game-breaking talent. And here's our game-breaking talent, Mike Hogwood. Uh, thanks, Steve. What an introduction that was. Well, you know, in a game like this, big rivalry, NC State and Carolina, the key to the game is liable to be a big play. of all for NC State. They have 
a great wide receiver in Eddie Goins, and he had a super game last time out against Wake Forest with two touchdown catches. He has game-breaking speed. He also has those great moves and super hands. Look for Eddie Goins to be making big plays today for NC State. Now, Natron Means is gone for North Carolina, but that running attack is as strong as ever. Natron Means may be gone, but they've got double trouble in the backfield for North Carolina. Johnson and Johnson, Leon and Curtis. Curtis leads the ACC in rushing, averaging over 107 yards a game. Both of these guys are online right now to become 1,000-yard rushers this season. As you can see through the history, Johnson and Johnson are ahead of some of their Carolina counterparts who have achieved that double thousand yard season. So the running attack is strong. Both these guys have tremendous speed. Now one note from here in the sidelines, we do have word that Jason Stanisek, who's been hurt most of the week, is healthy, looked great in warm-ups, and will play today. But in all probability, it'll be Mike Thomas, the sophomore, who will be starting at quarterback for the North Carolina Tar Heels. We're about ready for kickoff. This crowd is all filed in, settled into their seats. We're ready for the Wolfpack and the Tar Heels. We'll have the kickoff live from Raleigh in just a moment. Welcome back to Raleigh, North Carolina, and NC State for the 93rd time. North Carolina has a big edge in this series. There's a big crowd on hand. The weather conditions are perfect for football. It's cool, it's cloudy. Trip Pignetti of Charlotte, the junior for North Carolina, will kick off. North Carolina won the opening toss. They have deferred their option to the second half. Eddie Goins will receive the kickoff. He's the deep back for North Carolina State. Along with him, Brian Davenport. And we hope you're along with us this afternoon. Steve Martin along with Jack Corgan and Mike Hogwood. This is Eddie Goins. And Goins slips with Kevin Addis in the vicinity at the 23-yard line. And that's where they're picking up first and 10. Here's our monster starting lineups. First on offense for NC State. Behind Jeff Bender, they've got two versatile backs and Liddell George and Gary Downs. A good, strong receiving core and maybe the deepest offensive line in the uh, tenure of this coaching staff. That's what Ted Kane, their offensive coordinator, felt. Todd Ward, the center in particular, has played very well so far. Jeff Bender under center. George and Downs, his setbacks. And we're underway. Liddell George out of the backfield. George, who underwent arthroscopic surgery on September 13th. Gets out to the 26, it's a gain of three, and here's the North Carolina defense. Big and fast. Jones, Barnett, and Robbins will start, but lots of people will play on that defensive line. Great linebacking core. Bernardo Harris, the best of that bunch, but all four of them are very good. Maybe the best defensive player, the free safety, Bracey Walker. Uh, good, solid secondary. I like watching Walker. Out of the eye, second down, coming up in about six. George again, well, if he's been slow by that surgery, you'd never know it. He's out to the 37-yard line. It's a gain of 10 on the play for NC State. Well, they are doing some amazing things medically now with arthroscopic surgery. And a lot of times now a guy goes in and has something done that's small and routine like that, a little quick cleanup, and, and he walks back out of the hospital just as an outpatient, and two weeks later he's playing football. He's the senior out of Havelock, North Carolina. First and ten. And off the downs. Gary Downs gets into the hole, runs into Kerry Mock, Rick Steinbacher, and a host of others. Also, the nose guard, Troy Barnett, helped out. Barnett has been injured and nicked up a little bit earlier this week. He's from Jacksonville, North Carolina. A senior at 6'4", 280. We heard... Coach Dooley talked in the pregame show about teams wanting to establish the inside running game. As you said, Steve, these teams mirror each other. Both teams, if they can get effective inside of the tackles, make their option game that much stronger. So it's George and Downs. Behind Jeff Bender, Adrian Hill is split out one side. Going to the top side, here's the pitch to Downs. And Downs has some extra yardage out to the 45-yard line. Barnett with a shoestring tackle, but it's a gain on the play of about six yards. When you run the option, you need to have strong blocking from your tight end. And number 81, Ryan Schultz, was the guy on the corner 
who put an excellent hit on Bernardo Harris to get Gary Downs just uh, less than a foot away from a first down. So they'll give him nine on it. When you control that outside backer, Steve, you're going to run the option well. And this is Schultz's first game back from arthroscopic surgery as well. Third down and about a foot and a half. No score, first series of downs this afternoon. George is hit right at the line. Fumble. Ball looked loose. Carolina says they've got it. The initial hit put on by Kerry Mock. Carolina's got the football. Greg Black dueling there. Looks like Black was the one who got it away from Liddell George, but Jack Liddell George didn't have a shot at making that first down. Now watch the penetration here by Kerry Mock as he made the first hit, and as George spun around, the ball came loose. I'm sure the state people are going to feel like his progress had been stopped, but he was still squirming for the extra yardage, and Mac Brown's Carolina team forces the first turnover. First and 10, North Carolina. The NC State 44-yard line. Mike Thomas at quarterback, as we said. Curtis Johnson's big hole. Johnson on the move. Inside the 30 down to the 26-yard line. The tackle made by Ricky Bell, primarily the redshirt freshman from Columbia. And that's an 18-yard game. Watch the Carolina offensive line get out to the corner. Again, the key block is the tight end, and Greg DeLong had a great block on the corner. Johnson's speed cut it up the field for 18. Of all the people injured for North Carolina, Jack, the one they worried the most about was their tight end, Greg DeLong. First and 10 for the North Carolina Tar Heels. We're at the 27. Thomas on the option, and he is stuffed at the corner by Carlos Pruitt. He'll get two hard-fought yards, but Pruitt shot him down as he crossed the line of scrimmage. The sophomore from Greer, South Carolina, who already has 24 tackles. Well, he is a guy being asked to step in and play that inside linebacker spot that has had some excellent people for the Wolfpack the last couple of years, Billy Ray Haynes and people like that, and Pruitt is another one who gets it done. Second down. the throw and he's hit Tyler Lawrence helped by Lauren Pinckney their first sack of the day back to the 34 yard line a nine yard loss on the play they tried to flood the right side with Brooks and Holiday good coverage downfield and Lawrence after the pump fake buried Thomas from the blind side Tyler Lawrence we talked about the big play guys on offense He's the biggest of the big play men on defense for NC State. He moves to that outside linebacker position from the inside with the injury to Carl Reeves, forcing Lauren Pinckney down low. Here comes Curtis Johnson on third and long. No score. Johnson fights his way over the 30, gets some of the original yardage back down to about the 27-yard line. Damian Covington in on the tackle, but it's going to be fourth and long, and the kick unit comes out. Well, in a game like this with an intense rivalry, you can hear the crowd already how much they're into this football game. You need people to finish off big plays. This time, after the fumble, the big play was provided by Lawrence for NC State. Pinetti is perfect in three attempts this year, but his longest is 28. His career longest is 48 yards. This will be 44. There's the kick out of J. Boaz's his hole. is evident. State has held after the fumble with 9.48 left in the first quarter. No score. A key in this series will be first down plays in this game, I should say. And watching this sequence after the run by Curtis Johnson, they try and run the option on first down. If Mike Thomas pitches this ball here, well, he and Johnson, I, I, I shouldn't place all the blame on Mike Thomas because Curtis Johnson got too close to him and the mesh was not right. Thomas had to keep the ball, didn't really get anything, put him in second and long, Steve. Then the sack put him in third and long. And that allowed State to guess right very easily. The first and 10 now with the ball back at their own 27. Back to play action pass is Jeff Bender. After he slips, he hits Downs, and Downs is out of bounds at the 33-yard line. 
It'll be a gain of six on the play. Kerry Mock drove him out. One of the new wrinkles to NC State this year doesn't really have to do with the play calling itself, Steve. It's more personnel, and that Gary Downs is maybe the, the best combination they've had at tailback for all. Anthony Barber was a great runner, but didn't catch the ball that well out of the backfield. Downs can do both with equal ease. Second down and four. Here's Liddell George straight ahead over the 35-yard line. He's tackled at about the 36. It'll be a gain of uh, a long two, maybe three. Marcus Jones, a sophomore out of Jacksonville, North Carolina, and a good one. He had some great quality time last year as a true freshman. They have outstanding people on that defensive front, Carolina. Not only the starters, but you get into Black and Riddick Parker and Michael Payne. They, they go too deep very easily on that front. Third and two, no score. NC State with the football at their own 36. Here is George, and once again, oh, the pitch is to Downs. Downs with a great play fake by Bender gets the first down to the 45-yard line. Bracey Walker on the tackle after a nine-yard gain. Well, the key to the option, the ability of the quarterback to read and make a good play fake on the belly dive. He did that with Liddell George. Good block on the outside by Eddie Goins on the cornerback and the stalker, Bracey Walker, with an exclamation point to end the play. Jack, here's a different formation for State now. Three wide outs on first and ten. They call the tight end. Yep, hitting in the ballgame. Here's the pitch to down. The tackle by Mike Morton, the junior out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. And Robert Hinton on the top side, I think, might have held Ray Jacobs, the outside linebacker on that play. You are so right. James Knight, the referee. It goes from the spot of the foul. Offense, 10 yards. So there's the call, 10 yards, and that'll march you back to the 35-yard line. And that'll change your play call as you talked about the alignment for North Carolina stopping them and forcing them into obvious situations. Well, they went to that three wide out set hoping to change the look of Carolina and then run the pitch. And the Tar Heel defense was right there. Dallas Dickerson is in a tight end now. First and well, about 20, 18 action. By action for Bender. Going to Goins, completed North Carolina territory at the 40-yard line. It's a 16-yard gain. Bracey Walker on the tackle. Eddie Goins was second-team all-conference a year ago. And he has put up some big numbers already. Pretty good coverage. Bender threw it right between three Tar Heels. Good job on the bootleg action for Bender to step up and get that ball off. That's his 10th reception of the year. He has three touchdowns and 10 catches. First and 10, NC State here at the North Carolina 40. to the 32-yard line. Sean Boyd, the sophomore from Gastonia, North Carolina, makes the tackle. But it's a nice gain on the play. Dickerson, the tight end, helping out on the corner. The only problem with the option to really run it at its best, your quarterback at times can pay a price. You see Gary Downs has gone over 1,000 yards. He is the 16th man to do that at NC State. Bender took a heck of a lick from Troy Barnett at the of the pitch. Eight yard gain, second down and two. Pull back Liddell George into the open. Bracey Walker has to take him head on at the 20. It's a 13 yard gain. Well, you get second and short yardage. Good little trap action that time. Chris Henny rode with the block at the line of scrimmage, and George, following his sophomore guard's backside, moved it inside the 20 of Carolina. 
First and 10. NC State at the 20 yard line. Hinton wide top. Goins and Hill wide to the bottom. Goins is in the slot. Florida State, NC State, or Carolina on offense. If you're a high school or youth league football player, watch the job done by the wide receivers blocking on the option play. Adrian Hill at the bottom of the screen with a great block on Sean Crocker, and he also got Bernardo Harris as well. Second and one. NC State knocking on the door. They take to the corner. It's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald has the first down. Brian Fitzgerald, sophomore out of Cincinnati. Bernardo Harris makes the tackle, but it's first and goal for the Wolfpack. Well, NC State accomplishing two things here, marching down the field and taking a lot of time off the clock. Good block by Liddell George, enabling Fitzgerald, the young man out of Cincinnati, to get around the corner and get the first down. Brian Brown, the fullback. Is in there with Chris Cotton. They've got a stacked house backfield now. First and goal. From the eight-yard line. No score, but NC State knocking on the door. Here's Downs into the middle. Steinbach, though, the first to hit him. He gets to the six, and that's about it. A gain of one. Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator, talked to me about it, and I'm sure Daryl Moody, the offensive coordinator for Carolina, would echo the same thing. In this kind of game, when you get down inside the 20-yard line, you want to score a touchdown here because it has so much more of an emotional impact than just the difference on the scoreboard of four points. Exactly. And you want to make sure that you're not predictable once your offense gets inside the 20. Talk to Daryl Moody about that this week. in for the score. Steve Vinitich is on the kick. Out of the hold of Larry Austin. And it is good. North Carolina State and North Carolina having at it. And the NC State Wolfpack take the lead on a six-yard run by Gary Downs. We'll be back after this word from your local station. look at the NC State touchdown and watch how Gary Downs sets the defense. See, Bernardo Harris overruns it, Bracey Walker overruns it, Kerry Mock overran it. You stretch that option in the short yardage area, if you cut back quickly and sharply, you get success. A wonderful drive and they averaged over 10 yards on first down. Maybe the biggest was the first and long pass to Eddie Goins. Gary Downs with his 17th career touchdown. Steve Vinitich with this kickoff. Marcus Wall circles under it, two yards deep. Wall has just that and gets out to the 23-yard line. Nice return by Marcus Wall. The tackle made on the play by Chris Cotton. Let's take a look at the North Carolina starting lineups this afternoon. Mike Thomas under center, but now we see Jason Stanisek now has come out onto the field. Henderson will work a bigger load with Malcolm Marshall out. Curtis Johnson and Leon Johnson will play at that tailback spot. An outstanding offensive line. Curtis Parker, the best of the bunch, but hard to choose among them. There's Jason Stanisek, the junior from Park Forest, Illinois. Blue shoulder and last week's Florida State game missed most of the second half. First play from scrimmage is Curtis Johnson out to the 30-yard line. Carlos Pruitt and Tyler Lawrence on the tackle for NC State. The NC State defense, well, it's got some adjustments in it, of course. Lauren Pinckney down there at the nose of uh, the defensive tackle is one. They lost their outstanding defensive tackle, Carl Reeves. They're not very big up front, but they're very active, and they'll do lots of moving around. 
good secondary, a young secondary, Dwayne Washington, the veteran at left corner. Chris Watson is in at fullback this time out. On second down and five. It is Leon Johnson. Trying to follow the block of his guard and it breaks down as he gets over the 32-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, Steve, while the uh, Wolfpack defense is on the field right now, the offense, which put on that beautiful drive, is huddled over here. They are gathered around a couple of the assistant coaches readjusting the blocking schemes for their goal line offense. It may have looked good to us upstairs, but it, uh, to the coaches, they require some adjustments, and I think they also just want to make sure they stay focused. It's still real early in this game. Tar Heels trail it by seven and looking at third and two. Stanisek on the option. Pitches to Leon Johnson. He's got the first down out to the 37-yard line. Driven out by Ricky Bell primarily. Also, Carlos Pruitt, the inside linebacker, got to the play. Watch Jason Stanisek wait, wait, and then wait some more. He pays the price. Dwayne Washington pops him, but it enabled Leon Johnson to get around the corner and get the Carolina first down. You have to be willing to do that if you're an option quarterback. Started this drive at their own 23 yard line. They're at their own 37 near the 38 now. Stanisek on first down. Calls his own number, has another first down and more. Driven out of bounds in NC State territory at the 42 yard line by James Walker. A 20 yard gain by Jason Stanisek. Made the good read off of the belly dive fake and really accelerated once he got into the hole. Watch him coming right to the right side of your screen. Right now, he's going to accelerate it, and he just ran by Carlos Pruitt and William Strong and got way up into the secondary. Had Ethan Albright out there, and I make that uh, Sean Hocker on the outside to slow up Carlos Pruitt. First and ten. Tarheel's moving the ball now in NC State territory. Stanisek goes up and fires to his tight end, Brady. said early in the ball game first down activity is going to predicate success and right there after running the ball running the option effectively they lull you they lull you you start cheating up with your linebackers and they pop the tight end and the quick slant and DeLong going north and south gets it down inside the 25. Big John Akins is in the lineup defensively for NC State at one of the tackle spots first and ten for the Tar Heels Set pitches again. The option working to Leon Johnson. And he shows exceptional speed to the corner to get inside the 20. Again, Ricky Bell and Tyler Lawrence on the tackle after a four-yard game. Good job on the corner, too, by B Bucky Brooks. Watch the top of your screen. This play isn't really going to go anywhere, except that Brooks has got Dwayne Washington locked up there on the outside. That enabled Johnson to cut it back inside and get positive yardage. You run to the corners. Your receivers have to tie up that cornerback. North Carolina now, Jack, starting to get the yardage on first down that they need. Approaching the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. Here's the handoff to Henderson, the fullback. Ricky Bell, the man who brought him down to the one-yard line. Buckle up your chin strap because here comes a freight train going right down the middle of the track. What a pop he put on James Walker, the free safety. Ethan Albright with the big block to free it out. And Henderson from Chester, Virginia makes it all the way to the one. North Carolina now knocking on the door. John Akins, the senior from Fuquay, Verina, North Carolina, making the stop. One of the tri captains for NC State. Good penetration by Akins. Also, a good job by Tyler Lawrence to stack up the lead blocker. Second and goal coming up for the Tar Heels. Henderson, McGregor, and Leon Johnson in the backfield. after an impressive NC State touchdown drive. Carolina 
77 yards down the field like it was no problem. Trip Pignetti is on to kick the point after. Pignetti 17 out of 18 in that category thus far this season. And here is the point after touchdown. That ties this ball game up. With less than a minute to play in the first quarter, it's all even as both teams put on impressive drives to finish the first. Henderson goes in from a yard out, and the Tar Heels and the Wolf Pack are tied at seven each. First Union presents around the ACC, the big game at Death Valley today. Georgia Tech at Clemson. Duke is playing at Virginia this afternoon. Maryland takes its high-powered offense to Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest is at Northwestern. In that Virginia game, of course, you've got yourself quite a tandem in Simeon Willis and Charles Way, an outstanding fullback for George Welch and the Virginia Cavaliers. It's an active day around the ACC. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood, Bill Dooley on site in Raleigh, where NC State and North Carolina are having at it, and the Tar Heels have tied it up on William Henderson's one-yard run. The play of Jason Stanisek running and passing to Greg DeLong, and a big 20-yard run by Henderson to take them to the one was the key. Here's Eddie Goins coming back the other way. And Goins doesn't get far, out to about the 26-yard line. Oscar Sturgis and Kevin Addis come in on the tackle. It's a 10-yard return for NC State. They'll have the football out of their own 26-yard line. There's the scoring drive. Nine plays, 75 yards. Henderson with a one-yard touchdown run, but his 19-yard run to the one set all of that up. That just some great play calling by both offensive staffs on the touchdown drive. State down their own. 26, let up shop. First and 10 near the end of the first quarter. Derry Downs tries to get outside. Gets inside Bernardo Harris and Greg Black and Rick Steinbacher bring them down at the 35-yard line. It's a pickup of eight. Impressive running thus far by Gary Downs, who is coming out of the ball game after taking a pop at the end of that play. Again, he extended Bernardo Harris and then cut inside of him. Hill and Hinton are in the game. There's Mike Thomas on the sideline. They're looking at him. We'll get to the sidelines with Mike momentarily. Mike Hogwood will be checking into that. Gary Downs leaves the game with nine carries and 50 yards and a touchdown. Bender, the pitch to Fitzgerald. Hitchcock misses. And he gets flattened out there around the 40-yard line. Now we saw Warwick Dunn, the true freshman for Florida State, use that spin move to effectiveness. And Ryan Fitzgerald with a little spin gets it around the corner on the last play of the first quarter. First quarter comes to an end. North Carolina State and North Carolina come in here at 7 all. It's been everything we've asked for and more. Come back with us. NC State started the second quarter with a six-yard pass to Liddell George when the second play of this drive. Here comes Gary Downs to the corner. So Gary's okay. He's driven out of bounds by Mason on the play at the 49-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines right now and check up on injuries with Mike Hogwood. Steve, uh, Mike Thomas in the first series on that sack when he was hit by Tyler Lawrence injured some ribs. He's having some problems catching his breath right now. They, they taped it up, taking off his shoulder pads. Jason Stanisek's going to play quarterback, but they're really now worried about a punter. Jay Boaz, a sophomore from Pilot Mountains, loosening up over here. And if North Carolina has to punt when they're uh, on offense, it'll be probably Jay Boaz who'll be coming into the game. NC State looking at third and inches, and now Jeff Bender wants to talk things over with Ted Kane and Michael Kane on the sidelines. He'll call a timeout. The Wolfpack needing about six inches to get the first down just shy of midfield, and Jeff Bender wants to make sure that the call is right. Take a look at the Lee first quarter stats brought to you by Lee Apparel. And you can see both teams, after some initial difficulty, move the ball quite effectively. NC State with the edge right now. Mike talked. Uh, Mike Hogwood talked about Mike Thomas getting hit on the sack. It was. It was probably the finish to what started on the first down play when he ran the option and got hit pretty hard by Carlos Pruitt. Mm -hmm. You put those two together and all of a sudden you might have a guy looking just like Mike Thomas looks right now on the sidelines. 
it's a problem for Carolina in that Stanisek is not totally healthy. And if you lose him, now you're really scrambling. You're looking at a third line quarterback. But Stanisek certainly looked healthy on his first drive. Moving the, the Tar Heels down from actually their own 23-yard line, going 77 yards, picking up 20 of, of, of himself. And right now it's the Tar Heel defense that has to hold. Bender returns to the huddle. Griffiths is in the lineup. Ray Griffiths split wide out to the top side. Third and inches. Liddell George getting the call from Bender. And Bender will get the snap and get the first down. Kenneth Redmond lost his helmet on the play. Well, Redmond operating at center right now for NC State. A deep offensive line. They can run a lot of people. That was not the greatest snap in the world between Kenneth Redmond and Bender. It was fortunate for the Wolfpack that Jeff was able to hang out of that ball and get the first down. Eric Taylor back into the offensive line at left tackle. Is out first and ten for NC State. Bender the throw. Had a man open, but Adrian Hill, the intended receiver, fell down on the play. Sean Crocker covering. There, excuse me, I was going to say that there was some rain in the area, and we've seen a couple of slips, not anything too major so far this afternoon. This team, this field was used, of course, in the rain when Purdue came here in the season opener, but it's had about a month to heal. That was Bender's first incompletion of the day. He his first four passes. He's looking at second and ten. Carolina's got seven men in the box, and now they back off. Harris drops out. The pitch to Downs. Downs looking for running run. Jacobs at the 49-yard line. Greg Black had great penetration on the play. This play did not look very good from the get-go. You see Greg Black getting in there. Downs makes a number of guys overrun again. Watch 24, Bernardo Harris right here. Stop right there. Third down. They're saying no gain. Ten yards to go. Griffiths, Goins, and Hill, the wide receivers. Fitzgerald in the game at the tailback spot. He'll be in the slot. Bender to throw. Big pass rushes on. Pass is complete to Goins. And Goins wrestled down at the 46-yard line by Bernardo Harris. And they did not get the first down. So North Carolina's defense held nicely. Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for Carolina, calls Bernardo Harris one of the smartest players he's ever coached. Look how he reacts to Goins and the crossing pattern underneath. Makes a great open field tackle to deny Goins any chance of spinning around and maybe squirting for a first down. Stephen Jerry to get the kick. Bernardo Harris, his nickname is the Hitman. He's a Butkus Award nominee. George, not only does he return punts, but he is the punter. Going for the fair catch, Jerry, but it'll go into the end zone and come out to the 20. A 45-yard 45 45-yard kick by Liddell George, and North Carolina has the ball at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. So the Tar Heel offense comes back on the field with a score tied at seven, and we'll be right back. Now Mike Thomas has got the pads back on again. That's a good sign, and if he can get his foot limber out, of course they they hope they don't have to use his foot this afternoon as a punter. We'll get the full story from Mike Hogwood momentarily. Tied at seven, Stace Stanisek brings them out. North Carolina first and ten of their own twenty. Curtis Johnson fumbled, fumbled the football. State has it. Tyler Lawrence. The hit was delivered by Dwayne Washington. 
Great penetration by Mike Harrison. And then Dwayne Washington made the pop. And Tyler Lawrence with the recovery. Watch number 73 get inside. Forces Johnson to the outside. Washington with the hat right on the ball. And Tyler Lawrence came up with it in the pileup. Watch the pop. Number 20 right here. Right on the football. You teach a man making that hit. Put the hat on the ball and good things will happen. And did for NC State. They've got it first and 10. The Carolina 22. Goes to Downs. Downs wants to throw. Griffiths is there. Did he get it? Yes! At the four. 18 yards. Ray Griffiths, the senior out of Burlington Cummings High School here in North Carolina. Caught a lot of passes in high school. Big play here as he out jumps. Sean Boyd on the coverage. Sean Crocker over there as well, but the senior with a big play. First and 10, first and goal actually at the four yard line. Full house backfield. Bender calls his own number and gets close. He'll be marked down at the one. Steinbacher wrapped him up and prevented him from getting in the end zone. Bernardo Harris also in on the play for North Carolina. Well, they feel like Bender has improved as an option quarterback. Pretty good strength here. I mean, he drags Rick Steinbacher a yard or two to put the ball inside of the one. Two fullbacks, in essence, in the game, Rod Brown and Chris Cotton there. Ryan Fitzgerald is back there with him. Second and goal. a turnover. Carolina misfired on a field goal try after they forced a fumble. NC State with better field position after their fumble recovery. Punch it in to regain the lead. Rod Brown with his first collegiate touchdown. A freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. Fenatich for the point after. It is good. with the fumble. They take it from the 23 and they punch it in on the shoulders of Rod Brown. And they lead it 14-7. Dark class of 2007 watching the action of the 1993 team as they regain the lead. Good blocking on the left side. Just going up behind the block of Chris Cotton. Rod Brown with his first collegiate touchdown. NC State. Went to about uh, the third or fourth chapter of their playbook after the turnover to run the halfback pass on first down. Gary Downs didn't get a great pass off, but the good effort by Ray Griffiths to make the catch set up the score. And one more thing for North Carolina to think about defensively. Obviously, North Carolina State looking to get something a little different after they get the gift at the 23. Well, that's what you have to do. You know, you have to strike hard and fast when you come up with a turnover. Each team has had a turnover. NC State's turnover was capped off by a missed North Carolina field goal. North Carolina was not as fortunate this time around as they put it on the floor at their own 23. And four plays later, Wolfpack found themselves in the end zone. And that's where we find ourselves right now. 14-7. Mac Brown, Star Heels, trying to get the ball back. Vitajic getting ready, ready to kick it away. Marcus Wall is back deep. Vitajic gets all of this. Wall at the one-yard line. Wall hit from behind and brought down at the 17. The tackle made by Kenny Harris. Let's go to the sideline and Mike Hogwood. Steven, update on the Mike Thomas situation. He's put the pads back on. You saw him warming up a moment ago. The trainers say he can play if he has to, but he tried to punt a few moments ago, and it hurt him so bad it literally took his breath away. It's really doubtful at this point if Mike Thomas is going to be able to punt for North Carolina today. That means that Jay Boaz will get the honors if indeed they have to do that. So far, this first half, North Carolina has avoided that. 
was there explaining to his teammates what he thought happened when he got hurt. Watching the fullback behind Stanisek on first and ten, a handoff to Curtis Johnson. And a good faith builder, confidence builder. You go right back to the man who fumbled the football and say, you're carrying the mail for us this afternoon. Out to the 24, and he picks up about six. Well, you've got 11 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. You're only down one touchdown, and you've moved the ball today. There's no sense of panic at all on that far sideline. North Carolina knows they can move. They know they have a chance to put more points on the board. The slot man is the tight end. DeLong to the wide side of the field on second and three, and the handoff is to Curtis Johnson, and he's got another first down at the 33-yard line. A gain of nine on the play. Carlos Pruitt in on the tackle for NC State. Good change of approach right here by the Carolina offense. After doing a lot of option work, you, you get the NC State defense conscious of the outside. Now you take advantage of your size up front. You give the deep handoff, let your offensive line blow off the ball, and let Curtis Johnson pick his hole. And he's done that well on the first two carries. First and ten. Steps back, fires. The pass is complete. Threads the needle nicely to Corey Holiday, who's now caught a pass in 38 consecutive games for the Tar Heels. William Strong on the tackle after a 14-yard game. There are certain guys you can't help but just enjoy watching play football. Number one, Corey Holiday is a guy I really enjoy watching the game. He is just a guy with a great sense of the game and the adjustments you have to constantly make. And that was a fine catch. 120 receptions. Highest in North Carolina history. Play action for Stanisek on first down. This one's for DeLong. Ed Gallon covering in the flats on the incompleted flats. Corey Holiday, amazingly enough, in 120 catches, all those receptions, and still only six TDs. But he's their cheap possession guy. When they need it, they go to Corey Holiday. Doesn't have quite as much speed as Bucky Brooks, but don't let the lack of touchdowns fool you into thinking he can't go deep because he certainly can. Now the Tar Heels need it, second down and 10. They're on 46 yard line. Stanisek. Pitches to Leon Johnson, and Johnson gets close to the first down, but comes up shy at the 46-yard line. You have to think, Jack, that had the pitch been a little more on target, Johnson would have been able to take off. I'll tell you what, that was a good effort by Leon to catch this ball, a gutsy move on the part of Stanisak to make the pitch as they ran to the corner. Did a good job of burying Warren Pinkney on the perimeter by Scott Felice. Now you've got third and about three. NC State leading Carolina 14-7. Leon Johnson. He's close. I think he's got it. At about the 43, they'll mark him down there. On the tackle, Carlos Pruitt and Tyler Lawrence. You know, you talk about Leon Johnson. We showed you a graphic a moment ago that he's the third leading rusher in the ACC. We have the top three here today. Curtis Johnson's number one. Leon Johnson there, number three. And between them, NC State's Gary Downs. First and ten for the Tar Heels. They're in state territory now at the 43. Holiday split wide to the top side. DeLong is the slot to the bottom side inside the shoulder of Bucky Brooks. This has been his drive, and he gets inside the 40. And he gets down to the 38-yard line. It's a gain on the play of five. Next Saturday, you'll see one of two games. Our Exxon ACC Game of the Week will either originate from Tallahassee, where the Seminoles will take on Georgia Tech, or it could come your way from Clemson, where the Wolfpack will visit the Tigers. Check your local listings, or well, the game will show you next week. I like this offensive set with Greg DeLong and the slaughter taking a nasty split, as they call it. Takes Damian Covington out of the play. It's second down. Here's the fullback, William Henderson. He struggles to the 35-yard line. Give him a gain of two. And it'll bring up third and about two. Lauren Pinckney, a senior defensive tackle from Columbus, Georgia. 
in on the tackle. Replace Carl Reeves at that position. Third down and two. Tar Heels trailing here by seven. 8.28 left in the first half. Watson, the fullback. Stanisek gets the first pitches to Leon Johnson. He's on his way. Ricky Bell knocks him out of bounds at the 10. It's a 25-yard gain by Leon Johnson. They've had an awful lot of success this afternoon running the option away from the strength. Number 77, Scott Felice pulled, cut off the corner. That put Stanisek out in the flat, and you saw there was no outside leverage. Remember last week when we had Army and Duke and we talked about against the option? You've got to have a guy on the inside of the load block and a guy on the outside. They didn't have that kind of mess with Stanisek with the football. That's why the pitch was so effective. First. Looking for somebody to pitch to. He strung out to the corner and loses yardage to the 18. James Walker finished him off. But the play was made by Ricky Bell, number 42. He takes the pitch man away. Watch Leon Johnson. There's Ricky Bell right there. And Stanisek was going to pitch it, and he would have pitched it right into the back of Ricky Bell. Now the other safety, James Walker, flies up and drops him for a seven-yard loss. Now one thing to remember here, Jack, is that the ball started, the original line of scrimmage was inside the 10. North Carolina cannot get a first down. It's second and goal, and it's from the 17 after a loss of seven. Stanisek the throw. Has a man out in the flats. It's the long, and he falls over the knee, and that did not look good at all. The North Carolina medical staff quickly on the field. You hate to see that happen. He was the man, Greg DeLong, the tight end, that North Carolina worried about all week long. You look at all of their people who were doubtful, he's the guy they wanted back. Well, he is so important to both their running game and their passing game. And right there, the left knee gave way, and DeLong went down immediately. He, that was his fifth reception of the season. And he'd averaged about 28 yards a catch. And the crowd comes to a hush. Now, Freddie Jones, his backup, a redshirt freshman from Landover, Maryland, has been working out all week. Now, this is the second significant injury. And remember what Mac Brown talked about at the outset of our telecast not an emotional concern after the loss to Florida State but a physical toll that that game put on his football team guys that missed a lot of practice time Malcolm Marshall did not even dress for today's game a guy who sees a lot of time at fullback Mike Thomas is banged up now. You add Greg DeLong to that mix, and all of a sudden Carolina is counting heads on the sidelines in terms of experienced people to put out on the field. Has the number to call if you want scores at any time as we look to the sideline. DeLong is there. It's third down now and goal from the 14. Freddie Jones replaces him at tight end. He's the slot man to the wide side of the field. Back to throw. The blitz is on. Stanisek is sacked. Lauren Pinckney came in hard. Greg Giannamore was blitzing. The senior from Winter Haven, Florida. Well, when Dick Sheridan ran NC State, they were a heavy, stunning team in the red zone. It's no different with Michael Kane. Giannamore forced the pressure. Pinckney with the sack. And now the field goal try ends up being a 41-yarder when they had first and goal just inside the 10. Trip Pignetti, who missed his first attempt at 43 yards, will kick out of the hold of Jay Boaz. It's got enough, and it's good. A 40-yard kick. A 40-yard field goal for Carolina, so they don't get seven, but they get something on the board. But they may have lost much more with their tight end headed to the sidelines. 14 to 10, NC State in the lead. 
CC football is brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealers. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood and Bill Dooley in Raleigh where the NC State Wolfpack have the lead 14 to 10 over North Carolina following Trip Pignetti's 40 yard field goal. Here's his kickoff and going to have it at the 17. Kevin Addis broke through and made the tackle at the 19 yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Steve, they've taken uh, Greg DeLong to the locker room, and some good news for North Carolina is that he walked under his own power, and the trainers are thinking now that it might be a knee sprain, which they are certainly uh, would be a lot less severe than uh, any kind of ligament damage. So uh, the initial report on Greg DeLong is good. Whether or not he'll be back today uh, remains yet to be seen. Greg DeLong, a very vital part. The tight end plays a key role in an option offense from a blocking standpoint. First and 10. State from the 19. Back to throw Bender. Rush from Robbins. The screen out to Goins. Not much there. Bernardo Harris solves it beautifully. And it's actually a three yard loss to the 16 yard line. Well, they wanted to run like a, a wide receiver screen with another wide receiver blocking on the play. And Ray Griffiths fell down. Watch the bottom of your screen. Right there, you see Griffiths. Not fell down, and so he was not able to make the block on Bernardo Harris. And Harris drops Goins for a loss of a couple. It's going to be second down and 13. North Carolina's defense has strapped it on the last two times downfield. Play action to Downs. The rush is on. Here's another screen. This time it goes to Liddell George. Not Guess much who? doing there. Guess who? Bernardo Harris, he gets to cover everybody, doesn't he, Jack? Tell you what, he is an impressive young man to watch play football. Grew up right in the Chapel Hill area. Do you think uh, he's wanted to wear that uniform for a long time? Saw some of the great linebackers through the years, and now he's putting his name right alongside of some of the best. Third and 10 for NC State at their own 19-yard line. They lead 14-10. at the 10 yard line a loss of nine excellent defensive series for the Tar Heels now there's good coverage downfield they only rushed four guys but they only needed to rush the four guys because they got through early and Jason Bender had to run out of bounds back on the 10 so three plays end up with a negative nine yards and Carolina will get good field position with just under five minutes to go in the second quarter and a chance to draw closer or take the lead. And they have all of their timeouts left, they might add. 4.59 left. Here comes George with a kick out of the end zone. Jerry backed up to his own 47 and tripped up. At the 49-yard line, it is a 43-yard kick. Walt Gerard was the man who made the stop. Gerard, young man out of uh, Washington, North Carolina. He's a senior he's playing special teams. He was the MVP of the special teams a season ago for the Wolfpack. Gave you another example why. Great opportunity here, though, for Carolina. They're at the NC State 46. 4.49 left to go in the first half. Stanisek with Henderson and Curtis Johnson behind it in the eye. Quick pass goes to Curtis Johnson, and Ed Gallen is there to knock him for a loss of two. Ed Gallen, the junior linebacker from Lakeland, Florida. Well, either the play call from the sidelines or the read that Jason Stanisek is getting down on the field has prompted him for the most part to run away from the strong side of his formation. They have their tight end now, Freddie Jones, in that nasty split to Stanisek's left. They've been running away from that for much of the game. Second down and 12. And off Curtis Johnson. Johnson. It's all the way to the NC State 35-yard line. James Walker, the sophomore from Walterboro, South Carolina, brings him down. It's a 14-yard gain 
for the sophomore from Greensboro. Good penetration off of the line of scrimmage by that front wall, Pat Keneally and Sean Hawker, the center and left guard, got a great push on Eric Counts, the nose man, right there, and it opened a gaping hole. First and ten. North Carolina now in Wolfpack territory. Curtis Johnson, and this time he doesn't get very far. Big John. No, that's going to be Eric Counts. Well, this time they shaded the nose man. That is, Eric Counts played in the gap between the guard and center and was able to fight through the block of Keneally and Scott Felice right there. Actually, Keneally slipped and fell. And look how Counts fed off the block of Felice and made the stop right on the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Second and ten, make it. Pitches to Curtis Johnson, and again he stopped. Walker helped out on the play by William Strong. Not much there, maybe a yard. It'll bring up third down. It sounds very simple, Steve, but when you force yourself into second and long situations, it's tougher to do the things you want to accomplish, and it's the same thing happened to NC State on their last possession. Their first down play was a bust, and they just kept going backwards. Now Carolina with a big third and ten. Carolina trailing 14 to 10, looking to keep this drive alive. 307 left in the first half. State showing blitz, but they didn't come. Here comes the pass complete to Freddie Jones. It's at the 26-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain. And it is going to be short of the first down by about two yards. Great Janamore on the tackle. Janamore showed blitz on the play, then dropped off. But that fake action forced him to chase Jones running the crossing route. And the big freshman tight end ends up about two yards shy. And Carolina's going to take a timeout because I think they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Well, they're fourth and about two, as a matter of fact. And we'll return after these messages from the University of North Carolina and North Carolina State University. Falls and hits his man. That is Marcus Wall. It is complete to the 43. A five-yard gain, and Dwayne Washington was the one who hit it. As Dwayne Washington put some pops on out of the secondary for the Wolfpack, wow. He's caused a fumble today and stops that one after only five. It kept him in bounds. Clock's moving under a minute. Stanisek has a man open again. That is Bucky Brooks. And they say it's complete for the first down. A yard shy of midfield. A flag down on the play back at the 38. That's usually in the holding area. Either holding or a late hit. And it's going to be a holding, James Knight tells us. Negates the gain of six in the first down. And it'll send Carolina back to their own 28 yard line. Happened right at the end of the holding offense. Repeat the down. Happened right at the end of the delivery by Stanisek. Most of the people in the stadium watching to see whether or not the ball had been caught or trapped. And not everybody saw the flag. Well, being marked off 10 yards from the spot, which was five yards behind the line of scrimmage, it's a 16-yard loss on the play. Here's Stanisek to run. Stanisek looking for the corner. And he's driven out of bounds by Ricky Bell and driven over the bench. And fisticuffs break out. was running out of bounds and some of his Tar Heel teammates did not like the way he was pushed at the sidelines by Ricky Bell. He ended up going in and tumbling over one of the benches. Some of the Carolina people retaliated and flags went down and we'll have to see who maybe tossed Mac Brown 
not very happy and I'm sure he wants some people thrown out of the game right there. Now watch what happens. Stanisek goes up and over. And that caused all the problems. This is not an easy situation for the officials, not only in terms of settling things down here, but making any decisions on players being thrown out of the football game. There was not a North Carolina State player in the vicinity of where he went out with the bench. Stanisek, though, had more than enough steam to hit that bench and go over. And then John Bradley came off the bench in reaction to that play, and that's when everything started to fly out of hand. Jim Knight now trying to square things away with his officiating crew as to just who will stay and who will go, if any, and what the various assessments will be. Play started out second down and 20. The clock is stopped with 25 seconds left in the half. To the credit of the Carolina sidelines, the, the coaches did a good job of stopping that quickly from getting to be a problem and the NC State coaching staff did a good job on their sidelines to keep their players where they belonged and not let this thing really get out of hand. We have multiple dead ball fouls. We have a dead ball, personal foul, red with an ejection. We have a dead ball, personal foul, white, the yardage is offset. It's an automatic first down for the red personal foul. First down. We don't know who has been ejected yet. Have they thrown Ricky Bell from the game? I don't see Bell on. Well, he's still on the field now. Mike O'Kane. Now, right there, you could see Dwayne Washington, Lauren Pinckney, and others in the midst of it. We don't know yet who has been thrown from the game. That's what Michael Kane wants to find out. You had Washington, Walker, and Bell, the three-fourths of the secondary over there. The flag was actually thrown closest in the direction of, I thought, Dwayne Washington, but it looks like James Walker is the guy who is being removed. Well, Ricky Bell was the man who drove Stanisek out of bounds. He was the man responsible for him going out of bounds. Let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood will shed some light on this. Well, Steve, I have been able to find out that the player who's been ejected from the game is James Walker, the sophomore from Walterboro, South Carolina. He's out of the game, and uh, the rest of it should have been straightened out by the referees right now. Well, they didn't catch any numbers for the other side in terms of ejections. And he is driven out of bounds in front of that North Carolina bench at the 49-yard line. And it's a gain on the play of 13. Carlos Pruitt on the tackle. And not only the loss of Walker for the rest of the game with the ejection, but the fact that instead of long yardage, Carolina got the first down. It, it further handicaps NC State because now Carolina has a chance to get close enough for maybe a field goal try or still yet get a touchdown. And they have a timeout remaining with 19 seconds left. Here's Stanisek to throw. The pass is complete to Freddie Jones. And North Carolina looking for another first, uh, another timeout. It is not a first down. It's down to the 43-yard line. It's a gain of six. Ed Gallon covering on the play. But emotions running high here. As Stanisek was driven out of bounds, there was a fracas after that, and James Walker, the defensive back for North Carolina State, was thrown out of the game. Coming up next week on many of these same stations, you will see one of two games, either Georgia Tech at Florida State from Tallahassee, or you might see the Wolfpack in Death Valley to take on the Clemson Tigers. Check your local listings for the Exxon ACC Game of the Week next week. Steve Martin here along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood as North Carolina gets their final timeout with 10 seconds left to go here in the first half. It's been a wild finish to the first half. Emotions typically run high. And when you drive the quarterback out of bounds and he falls over the bench, well, the consequences you have to accept. 
NC State expressing some concern that there were not penalties against North Carolina or maybe even an ejection for some helmets being slung over there on the other side. And there may be some justification for that concern. Second down and four. Jason Stanisek, that stops the clock with five seconds left. Pinkney making the great play. Lawrence as well. First team all ACC last year. Playing what is known as the Raider end. Moving in from the inside linebacker position. Now four, five seconds left. This is air it out time. They'll put Wall and Holiday to the bottom of the screen. Brooks to the top. And clock expired. Yep. So a delay of game penalty on North Carolina as this aim kind of scutter stutters into halftime. So it turns it into third down and ten. There's the situation. 14 to 10 the score. NC State on touchdowns by Gary Downs and Rod Brown sandwiched around a William Henderson touchdown run of one yard all from close in. Third down final play of the half five seconds left. Brooks wide out to one side. Stanisek back to throw steps up fires across the middle it is complete to Leon Johnson but that ends the first half. Ed Gallon on the tackle. A wild first half, especially near the end. As North Carolina and NC State have at it, their traditional rivalry enjoined and renewed. And NC State leading here by a score of 14 to 10. Gary Downs and Rod Brown score around a William Henderson touchdown for the Tar Heels. And the Wolfpack uphold their ranking as 17th against the 19th ranked Tar Heels here as we get set for halftime. Let's get down to Mike Hogwood who's standing by with Wolfpack coach Mike O'Kane. Mike, that's a wild finish to the half. Uh, you shed any light on course? Well, I think we pushed the guy laid out of bounds, and from then on, I have no idea what happened. They said uh, James Walker grabbed one of our, one of their players. I don't know. You know, you, so you're, you couldn't you, tell anything. Everything oh, got covered up with white all of a sudden. I don't know anything. Only an NC State player got ejected, though. Well, I, you know, I'm not going to comment on that. I can't make a comment. All right, let's talk the only about. I know is our players kept. We kept them off the field. It could have been nasty, and it wasn't. It's 14 to 10. You're leading at halftime. This game still has a long way to go. You happy with the first half? Yes and no. Uh, we've, we've done some good things. We haven't played smart. We've made too many mental mistakes defensively and offensively. Uh, we've not protected the passer, which we said we had to do coming to this football game. We've got to do a much better job the second half. I'll let you get to the locker room. Mike O'Kane, head coach of the NC State Wolfpack. We are at halftime, and the pack lead the heels in this annual showdown in North Carolina. It's 14 to 10. We'll be back with our Greg Long's out with a knee. I think they show some very interesting things as far as this game is concerned for North Carolina State. You've got to take advantage of things when you get the football. Right, in terms of total offense, you see Carolina has an advantage of over 60 yards, but the difference in the ball game has been that NC State converted on the turnover they forced, and Carolina did not. Carolina has moved the ball better, but State's come up with some big plays defensively to keep them in it. Big plays like the first touchdown of the game. Gary Downs going in from four yards out to put the Wolfpack out in front. Impressive opening drive, and Downs set up the Carolina offense beautifully, strung them out, and then cut back against the grain and scored standing up. It made it 7 to nothing. Carolina came right back down the field. This run up the middle by William Henderson set up the touchdown later on as Henderson went for 19 yards. But after Dwayne Washington forced a fumble on the first play, 
They throw the ball to Gary Downs, and on the halfback option pass, Ray Griffiths made a very fine catch. It set up a first and goal, and NC State got their go-ahead score. Rod Brown took it in from about one yard out, and that made it 14-7 at that point, followed by a trip Pignetti field goal, and that's the scoring here in an exciting first half. Second half kickoff and more coming up when we return to Raw. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of the Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by... Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. For high performance, rely on the Tiger. By Lee Apparel. With regular relaxed and loose fit jeans, Lee is the brand that fits. By Pepsi. Be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By Shoney's Breakfast Bar. The best breakfast in town. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. Welcome back to Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. Just about set to start the second half. NC State leading North Carolina 14-10. to 10. Let's go to the sidelines where just a few moments ago, Mike Hogwood talked with Mac Brown. All right, we're with Mac Brown now. Well, a great first half. This is a super football game. Mike, it is a great football game. I think we've settled down some on defense against a good NC State offense. We had to make the fourth and two. We can't turn the ball over on our end of the field. We've got to settle down and play better fundamental football the second half. Two big injuries for you, Mike Thomas, Greg DeLong. What's the status on those guys? Will we see them in the second half? Both of them are out for the game. What are you going to have to do now to get another touchdown on the board? Got to relax and have some fun and go play hard and not worry so much about what we're doing and just go play. All right, we'll let you Thanks. go after it. Matt Brown, coach of the Tar Heels. Steve Vitetich, Steve Vitetich rather, getting ready to kick it away. Vitetich out of Winston-Salem. There's Marcus Wall back to receive as North Carolina will get the ball back here to start the third quarter of play. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood, Bill Dooley. On hand for you here at Carter Finley Stadium. The sun's starting to peek its way out on an otherwise nice day. Here's Marcus Wall with it at the 10. Wall hits the seam at the right spot. Wall has a wall of steam behind him and will get a nice return out to the 49 yard line. That's the kind of way you want to start a second half that gets that momentum going your way. It looked like in the first half that Marcus Wall had a chance to break one, but Gerard made a good tackle. This time he squeezes through and immediately cuts against the grain again. Got around Adrian Hill, and finally Gerard and Hill chased him out of bounds. 41-yard return by Marcus Wall. First and 10, Jason Stanisek set up a yard shy of midfield. Here's Curtis Johnson. Curtis Johnson had big running room. He's in the secondary. Only William Strong can catch him. Touchdown, Tar Heels. Mac Brown said have some fun. They're having a load of fun on the far sideline right now. Great kickoff return. Great running play as Curtis Johnson goes 50 yards for the touchdown. Curtis Johnson breaks it off for his fifth touchdown of the year. His longest run of the season still remains really up there, but that certainly helps his status as the leading crowd gainer in the ACC. Trip Vignetti getting set for the point after. That'll put Carolina up by three, and it does. Well, Curtis Johnson... State 100 meter champion in high school out of Smith High over in Greensboro and you give him a chance to get in the open field that's what the rushing numbers were like coming into the game today Johnson has already topped that as he is toted the ball for 110 yards watch the blocking the double team a little inside trap and really what happened Carlos Pruitt overran the play and that allay allowed Curtis Johnson really just to run a straight line because the trap man was caught in traffic. But when Pruitt overran the play, Johnson took advantage of it. Curtis Johnson with the touchdown at North Carolina, just like that, but for the first time this afternoon, takes the lead. 
17 to 14 and we have only 18 seconds gone in the second half of play. Davenport and Goins going back to get Trim Pignetti's kick the NC State defense second in the ACC in rushing defense but today they have allowed 183 yards. Well keep in mind that the two teams they played in the first two games Purdue and Wake Forest prefer to throw the ball a little more so those numbers can sometimes be misleading. Vignetti getting set to kick it away. So that's how you start the second half. This is Goins. He'll have it at the 15. Goins runs into his own man and changes direction, but one knee went down at the 24-yard line. A tackle made by North Carolina's Wendell Camp from Forest City and also Kevin Addis in on the tackle for North Carolina. So it's at the 24, first and 10. First and 10, NC State. They have the ball at their own 24-yard line. Chris Cotton in at the fullback spot. Downs right into the middle. Not much there, up over the 26-yard line. We talked about North Carolina not panicking in the first half because you've had success moving the football. That's really the way NC State has to view it. I mean, certainly there's an emotional shift with the quick touchdown by Carolina, but really that's almost like coming out of the locker room down by three points. And you say, all right, we've got the ball to start the second half. Hill is split wide out to the top side. Goins to the bottom. the 24 yard line. Let's see who's got it at the bottom. It's Greg Black. His second fumble recovery of the day. Downs was stumbling as he came out of the backfield. Didn't really have his legs underneath himself as he turned up field and Jimmy Hitchcock with a hit right on the football. And Greg Black beat Todd Ward to the ball. Jimmy Hitchcock with a big, big hit. They've been waiting for this young man to come to the forefront. He took the starting role in preseason, and Lawrence Winslow can't get it back. First and 10, North Carolina, Curtis Johnson again. And Johnson dances in the NC State secondary inside the 10-yard line, down to the 8. is very good up front. They're small and quick, but they don't have the size to stand up against an experienced offensive line of the University of North Carolina. North Carolina's only lost one offensive lineman. That's Randall Parsons. First and goal at the eight. The voice of Bill Dooley joining us in the booth here in the second half. Here's William Henderson straight ahead, and he goes to the six-yard line. Carlos Pruitt wraps him up for the tackle. One of the adjustments that Carolina is making, at least here in the early going of the second half, coaches, they've sort of gotten away from the option, said, hey, let's just pound it between the tackles. That's exactly right, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. In fact, I'd give it to Johnson and Johnson one time right after another. Second down and goal. That was spoken like the old trench fighter. <laughs> Status set. Chance to put Carolina up by 10 is tackled by Janamore. Well, NC State may be smaller, but they do have the quickness. Well, they are quick, and that was good penetration on that option play. And any time you penetrate and force the quarterback, uh, here it is right here. Watch the penetration. Jana Moore comes in, and of course, it's going to be Benoit. Well, changes the play call now. Third and goal from the nine. Holiday wide side with Bucky Brooks in the slot. Look for some crossing route to the left side. to throw. The pass is incomplete. You can count on it down here, Jack. Every time you get in four-down territory, NC State is going to lay their ears back and blitz you. And that's the second time they've been successful doing that. Well, Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator, knows that 
they are smaller but have the quickness so that's in that scoring zone you want to say hey we're only going to give them three we got to try and push them back they're very effective with it. Chip Pignetti is on to try his third field goal attempt of the afternoon. He missed from 43, hit from 40. This one will be considerably smaller, though. It's going to be a 26-yard kick out of the hold of Jay Boaz. North Carolina trying to take advantage of the turnover, and they do. So Chip Pignetti scores, and North Carolina capitalizes on NC State's fumble at the 26, and they punch it in with the field goal from Pignetti second of the day. It's North Carolina 20, NC State 14. Two plays in the second half. A 50-yard run by Curtis Johnson and a fumble recovery by North Carolina at the NC State 26-yard line and turned this game around in the Tar Heels' favor. 20-14 to 14 with 12.03 left to go. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood, and Bill Dooley. The Tar Heels have that type of team. They can strike quickly. They have done so both offensively and defensively here in the second half. Wolfpack defense stiffened. Force Carolina to settle for a field goal, and we're back underway. Goins. Back under it. Heads to the sideline where there's some blocking. There's a penalty on the play. Thrown down at the 34-yard line. Blocking there by Gianna Moore. Eddie Mason makes the tackle for North Carolina. I think we're going to get a face mask. The first contact on Eddie Goins by Ray Jacobs was up around the headgear. Jim Knight telling us the five-yard. Now watch Jacobs. He'll reach out. Anytime you see that head turn, you know they've grabbed the headgear. Five yards. Face mask. Go first. So State has it at their own 20, 36-yard line. Carolina doing that short kickoff. They're really concerned about Goins breaking it, so they'll take the high short one and hope they can get good coverage. Here's the scoring drive after the fumble by NC State. Wolfpack has it back. This time they trail by six. Liddell George, actually the pitch goes to Downs. Downs actually gained yardage after the 39-yard line. Jimmy Hitchcock in on the tackle. Well, Gary was looking upfield before he had that ball put away. It was fortunate for NC State from their perspective that that ball didn't bounce away as Hitchcock was right in the neighborhood. Good ball fake on the belly part of the option by Bender. They had some room around the corner. Second down and seven. Downs and Cotton are set up behind Bender. Troy Barnett. Carolina shifting a lot on the defensive front, going from that odd look to an even look, even though there are an even number of, mem of players on that defensive front. Bender tried to do a late checkoff and run a quick trap, but Barnett was right there. Third down. NC State trailing by six. Hill is split to the top, the bottom side. Griffiths and Goins to the top. the throw. Has time. Complete to George. His fullback for the first down. In North Carolina territory at the 49-yard line, Bracey Walker, the man covering on the play. Good job by the NC State offensive line to pick up the blitz, and George running a little circle route right out of the backfield. You see Mike Morton on the blitz, so George goes right where the blitzing linebacker departed. The other linebacker, Kerry Mock, couldn't get there in time to stop him. First and 10 coming. NC State at the 49-yard line of North Carolina. On the option, Bender to Downs. To the corner. Fairly well set up, but the speed of North Carolina secondary catches up quickly. It is Crocker coming in there on the tackle with some help from Oscar Sturgis. Ryan Schultz had a pretty good block on the perimeter, but that big guy right there, Oscar Sturgis, who last year was a tight end. He's got great speed and hits so very hard. The Carolina coaches more
more than pleased with how quickly Sturgis adapted to playing that outside linebacker spot. Now it's with 67 yards this afternoon. Second and six coming. Ball is at the North Carolina 45 yard line. Bender executes the pitch to Downs. Downs hits the corner but also runs into Bernardo Harris. He's shy of the first down at the 41 yard line. Sean Crocker and Ray Griffiths going at it. You see Eddie Goins locked up here with Bernardo Harris. And Harris finishes him off. The two wide receivers that time not as effective on their stock blocks. Good effort by Harris to get off of Goins and by Hitchcock or make that Crocker to get off of Ray Griffiths. Big third and three coming. NC State now trailing here by six, 20 to 14. Hinton is split wide to the top side. Pitch goes to Downs, and Downs is hit. There's a flag on the play as Jacobs was in on the tackle. A little extracurricular at the end of the play as well with Adrian Hill. We're going to get a holding call. State and the state bench not happy because they thought that Jimmy Hitchcock had thrown Hill out of bounds well after the whistle. They were looking for a personal foul and uh, it wasn't a personal foul. As you said, it was holding. holding offense, repeat the down. So it's third down over again, but this time in NC State territory at the 48 yard line. Jack, you were talking earlier about uh, North Carolina shifting their front and what they're trying to do is give an odd man look on one side, then they'll shift to another to keep NC State off balance as far as what plays they're going to run into. It. Looks like Jeff Bender's also calling a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage. He's calling a lot of check with me's in the huddle. Third down and 14. State down by six. And a sack. Austin Robbins with a sack. That's his third sack of the season. Austin Roberts, a three-year starter here at Carolina. And the speech major out of Washington, D.C. is a load at 285 pounds. Watch him just overpower Sean Johnson. What a great bull rush that was. So credit the secondary for the coverage, forcing Bender to hold on. Here's George getting set now for punt. And George didn't get a good one away. And North Carolina is going to get an excellent field position. They're going to get the ball at their own 47-yard line. It is a 12-yard punt. Short, and now the NC State defense doesn't have an awful lot of real estate to protect. Back after this word from your local state, 20 to 14, with 7:28 left to go in the third, and our Exxon ACC game of the week. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, Bill Dooley, and Mike Hogwood with you for this arch rivalry. It's 93rd renewal. First and 10 for North Carolina at their own 47-yard line. The short punt by Liddell George. Stanisette. Johnson and he's hit by John Akins and Greg Janamore. Janamore may get more credit for that tackle, but it was Akins who made the initial hit. Let's go to this. Well, we're going to get a replay first. And just what Steve was talking about, you see Akins at the bottom is he did a good job of getting through the initial blocking effort. Janamore, as he's supposed to, cleans it up over the top. So it's second down and 12. Stanisek with play action. Pass is incomplete to Freddie Jones, who is wide open. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. On that sack, Jeff Bender injured his left shoulder. He is moving it very gingerly right now. The trainers have looked him over, but Terry Harvey is doing some serious loosening up on the state sidelines, and it's a very good chance that he'll be a new quarterback for NC State in just a moment. I talked to Michael Kane yesterday, and he, I asked him specifically if we'd see Terry Harvey at all. This seems to be a good situation when NC State gets the ball back to do just that. Third down and 12. North Carolina up by six. 
Did Akins get back in time? It looks like he did. Chris Watson, the backup fullback, gets it out over midfield and, and gives Carolina punting room. And this will be the first time, gentlemen, this afternoon that North Carolina has had to punt the ball away. Well, we lost Mike Thomas, their normal punter, and probably the reason why Carolina is punting, they lost Greg DeLong, their starting tight end, because Freddie Jones dropped a very catchable ball on that second down play. Jade Boaz is back to punt on fourth and about seven, and back to return will be Liddell George. We continue with our Exxon ACC game of the week. Terry Harvey is now in at quarterback, and Bill Dooley, Terry Harvey, gives them an option look. Well, he does. He uh, They're considered by the NC State coaches that Harvey's a little bit option better football player than what Bender is, but both of them are outstanding, and we'll, we'll see Harvey put that ball in the air also. Bender did a good job in that category. He was 10 out of 11 and 59 yards. The opportunities, though, were not there because of field position in this game, as we talked about. And that, gentlemen, is the next important battle. NC State, with this drive, Jack, has to establish field position. They want to make sure that if they don't score in this drive, they get it at least out close to midfield so that if they have to punt, they can back up Carolina. Harvey for his first turn under center. Play action fake, and he'll go to the air immediately. Into the flats, Liddell George. George is driven out at the 27-yard line by Mike Morton. Looked like Hitchcock had a chance to get him first. <laughs> Eddie Mason is on the sidelines and going back to the Carolina huddle now, still trying to figure out how he didn't have an interception because the ball went right through his hands. Inside linebacker whose job is to cover the fullback in that play said, oh, I got a pickoff. And all of a sudden, Adele George has got an eight-yard gain. Goes to George, and he'll pick up the two yards necessary of the first down, and even more out to the 33-yard line. Ray Jacobs from Hampstead, North Carolina, coming up to make the tackle. Well, the versatility of a Liddell George certainly makes things better for Michael Kane. He's got the power to run inside. He's got enough speed that he can actually run to the corner as a pullback and then catches the ball so well. First and 10, NC State. 35 left to go here in the third. Ron Brown in a fullback, and he'll get the play fake. Ball is fumbled, picked up by Terry Mock. Terry Mock picks up the third turnover of the afternoon at the 31-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines. And Mike Hogwood. Steve, in that big fumble recovery, we want to take just a minute and tell you about some special friends that we have here at the game today. We have uh, Jim Carter, who's the national sales manager with the Exxon Company USA. Good to see you, and we're awfully excited about Exxon's involvement in ACC football. Well, Exxon's proud to once again sponsor the Atlantic Coast Conference this year. Tell us a little bit about Exxon's involvement in ACC. Well, we've got a couple of new programs this year, Mike. We have the Exxon ACC Community Spirit Award, which recognizes a football player each week for his outstanding community contributions. We also have the Exxon Atlantic Coast Conference Kids and College Program. More in a moment, Steve. Third fumble of the day. Picked up by North Carolina, Leon Johnson hits the corner. And he gets out to about the 28-yard line. It's going to be a gain of four. Back to Mike Hogwood. Thanks, Steve. As I mentioned, we're also joined by the commissioner of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Gene Corrigan. And Commissioner, Exxon really does a lot for education in the ACC, don't uh, This is a great thing that we're doing now, to bring these youngsters on campus, to let them spend a little time, meet some of the football players on the day before games. And we're going to do this at Wake Forest, Duke, and Maryland with Florida State involved a couple times. So we look forward to it and hope it'll be something that'll be a great value to young people. Gentlemen, thank you. Great to have you at the game today. Second down, seven yards to go. North Carolina flag thrown into the fray late at the 25-yard line. Carrying the football is Leon Johnson. Going to go against Damian Covington. I don't know if it was 
Just a little piece of the face mask or some other extracurricular activity. It is just that, a face mask. Well, if you're NC State's defense. Five yards, face mask, defense. First down. That moves the chains. You're saying to yourself, if you're a Wolfpack defender, I've got to force a turnover or I've got to force them to kick a field goal. I can't give up the touchdown. And if you're a Carolina offensive player, you're saying, we want six. Well, right here, Jack, you're going to see. You'll see NC State. They're going to come and blitz. I'll guarantee you, in this position, they're going to lay their ears back and send about eight up. North Carolina gets down to the 15-yard line. It's a gain of three on the play. In that kind of scenario, Bill, do you think uh, some type of play action to get the ball to Brooks or Holiday might be in order? Well, I think you're going to have to throw it quick, either a three-step or a five-step, because you can't hold it. They're going to come. Second, That's been their tendency. Second down and six. Stand a sec. And there it is. There's the fifth. Down to the six yard line. Actually, they're going to mark him down at the eight. Stanisek hit there by Damian Covington. And now North Carolina has themselves a first down inside the 10. Well, this was uh, a blitz by NC State, and Stanisek just did an excellent job of cutting up inside the blitz. As you can see, NC State is in man to man coverage, and Stanisek just does an excellent job of breaking up inside it. It's a game of numbers. One on one instead of one on two. First and goal. Stanisek is at the NC State eight yard line. Here's Curtis Johnson, and he's hit by Lauren Pinckney. And Eric counts. Not much running room there at the heart of the NC State defense. Now you've got the wider side of the field to Stanisek's left. Makes the option pass a little more difficult in terms of running away from where he wants to throw the ball. A little bit across the body kind of effort, but I got to believe they're going to work some kind of option ploy to the left side of the Carolina offense here. They've got Brooks and Holiday both split to Stanisek's left. Second goal from the eight. Leon Johnson gets his way inside the five. Covington, Gallum, and several other people in on the tackle for NC State. It'll be a pickup of the play of at least four. Well, Daryl Moody and Mac Brown must have thought the same thing that I did, that NC State would be thinking that, so they counter it back the other way, away from the string, and it gets good yardage. Those last three, though, are going to be awful tough to come by, and Mac wants a timeout to make sure of what they're going to call here. This is a very big situation. You get a touchdown here, and now it's two touchdowns that NC State would need to get back into the game. Well, Jack, they need to get something on the scoreboard, even if they don't get a touchdown, if they can come out with a field goal because it's 20 to 14, and you need to go up at least over seven points. 2.15 left to go here in the third, and with that, we want to remind you to spend New Year's Eve at the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida. Send a postcard with your name, address, and telephone number to the address you see there on the screen, and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare. The winner will be announced during the ACC Game of the Week on November 20th. You must be 21 years of age or older to enter. Now let's see if Carolina will employ some kind of two tight end setup and maybe work some kind of action off of that or if they'll stay with the two wide receivers Brooks and Holiday. And Here's where the injury of Greg DeLong okay. plays big because now you're looking at your third tight end to come in and be your second tight end in a goal line blocking situation. Well that does make it difficult and it all depends on they have discussed it over there on the sidelines whether they're going to go up inside with Henderson or whether they'll try to come outside. There's Greg DeLong sprained knee but as a precaution they've got it uh, split it up in pretty good shape. He's on crutches the rest of the day as the Tar Heels now look okay. to build on their lead. Third and goal. Watson, Henderson, and Leon Johnson into the ball game. Stanisek rolling out. Has a man there. Touchdown, Montoro. 
The third tight end. Mark Montaro, the freshman from Marietta, Georgia. They're going to go for two. Well, that was an excellent call by the Carolina coaches. A good bootleg. They completely fooled the NC State defense. As Stanisek faked the sweep and came outside and just made a tremendous play. He actually had three options there on the bootleg. He could try and run it. He had the tight end to the bootleg. Freddie Jones running a little out pattern. And then the backside tight end, Montero, running the crossing route at the back line of the end zone was wide open. North Carolina going for two. They lead it here by 12. Two here makes it a two touchdown with point after lead. Stanisek flagged down. Pass intended for Leon Johnson. See what the call is going to be, whether North Carolina will get another crack at it here. I think NC State was in the neutral zone. That'll give the Tar Heels one more shot. Mark Montoro, his first score as a collegiate. Both sides, defense, the penalty is accepted half the distance. So they'll get another chance as North Carolina tries for two after the touchdown pass to Mark Montoro of about four yards. Stanisek brings them in for another call. Brooks and Jones split wide to the top. Holiday to the bottom. Johnson the set back behind Henderson. Stanisek on the pitch to Johnson. He's got it. What a pitch. And what a catch. Unbelievable that Stanisek can get rid of that ball right when he's being tackled and be able to pitch it out to Leon Johnson to go in for the two points. The two point conversion gives North Carolina a 28 to 14 lead as we look at it again. Watch this as Stanisek is being hit. He has presence of mind to get the ball out to Johnson, and that's a well-executed option play for the two points. Eric Counts was the man who had Stanisek with it in his grasp at the two-yard line, but he hit Johnson on the fly with a pitch to the corner, and it's 28 to 14. North Carolina with an 18-point explosion here in the third quarter. One more look again at the touchdown. Now look at right here, Stanisek could think about running. He's got Freddie Jones there and Montaro on the back line of the end zone all alone. I love running that bootleg action down in close with the two tight ends because that second tight end, or in this case for Carolina, the third guy on the depth chart is going to be the guy they left all alone. And Stanisek found him and hits Montoro. I think that's his first catch in college. And now it's the first touchdown and a big one in a big game. And, of course, a big penalty after that to give North Carolina two cracks at the two-point conversion. So we've got a new kicker in the game as well for North Carolina for Chris Searcy is going to kick off. Searcy, the freshman from Raleigh, and he gets a deep boot to Goins, who will not come out. Well, after spending much of the game kicking the high short kick, they run out the freshman. He booms it deep. It changes all the blocking schemes that the NC State special teams had in mind there, and they're forced to start on their own 20. This has been a very impressive third quarter for Mac Brown's Tar Heels. Keep in mind, they were right in it coming into the third quarter last week and couldn't sustain it against Florida State. This is a building block kind of quarter, not only for this game, but for the rest of the season. First and 10, NC State at their own 20-yard line. Terry Harvey in the throw. Barnett with a big rush to screen to Liddell George. George gets out to the 29-yard line. Sean Boyd in on the tackle with Rich Steinbacher. Well, a big factor has been that uh, University of North Carolina in the second half has not had to go a long distance. They've had four possessions, and all of them have been at least the 50-yard line in, and that's when you don't have to go the long way, that makes a difference. Two turnovers and a short punt in those four possessions. Here's the pitch on second and short to Gary Downs. North Carolina sniffs it out pretty good. 
Terry Mock, who picked up the fumble a moment ago. Rick Steinbacher, Bernardo Harris. And also give a call to Marcus Jones, a sophomore out of Jacksonville, North Carolina, on the tackle. Marcus Jones, who played in all 11 games last year as a true freshman, and it's rare to have a defensive lineman ready to play major college football in his first season, and Jones gave an example why he was in the lineup last year. Third and four. State trailing by two touchdowns. Just like that. Here's Harvey to the end. We wanted Brian Fitzgerald out there in the flats. Gracie Walker cover. Well, that was very good uh, pressure by the Carolina defensive front. So Harvey comes to the sidelines. Liddell George is back on the field. And NC State getting set to punt the ball away on fourth down with 55 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. You play a whole quarter on offense, the Wolfpack does with less than 10 plays. Steven Jerry back to catch the punt of Liddell Jordan. Jerry has it, and he's hit immediately by Gerard again. Walt Gerard, as Jack pointed out, special teams MVP a year ago, showed why. It's a 29-yard punt, but only a two-yard return. And North Carolina, again, gentlemen, has field position. And they're going to start this drive from their own 46-yard line. Coming up next week, you will see one of two games. You will see either Georgia Tech at Florida game. We'll be bringing you next week our Exxon ACC game of the week. First and 10, North Carolina from the 46. Here's the pitch to Curtis Johnson. And Johnson tackled by Tyler Lawrence as he gets across midfield at the 49-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. I may be dating myself here a little bit, Coach, and going elsewhere in the country, but when you run an option attack, there are certain guys who just seem to have that fit, and like J.C. Watson way back when with Jack Mildren and all those people during the great wishbone years of Oklahoma had quarterbacks, Jamel Holloway, who just knew when to make that pitch, when to cut up, and it sure seems like Jason Stanisek's the same way. Well, he certainly is. He has that ability to make that pitch at the last second. Second down and about six. Here's the handoff, Curtis Johnson. Johnson finds a hole off left tackle and gets out over the 45-yard line. I looked over at Bill Dooley, and he immediately was getting into the coaching position as if he was on the line of scrimmage, hands on the knees, bent over. Well, you know, it, it appears that uh, North Carolina is now beginning to dominate up front the smaller defensive line. So the third quarter has come to an end. An explosion of 18 points for the Tar Heels, who lead going into the fourth, 28 to 14 over NC State. Everything matters. We're in Raleigh, Carter Finley Stadium. Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the Exxon ACC game of the week. North Carolina leading NC State, 28 to 14. Steve Martin with Jack Morgan, Bill Dooley, and Mike Hogwood. With the third and two. They're in state territory at the 45 yard line. Maurice McGregor in motion, and here's Curtis Johnson. And Johnson hits the line for the first down. Carlos Pruitt is in there for the tackle, and it's yet another stick mover for North Carolina. Well, you talk about Curtis Johnson's great speed, and of course, he was a state high school sprint champion. But you lose sight of the fact sometimes he's 208 pounds. So it's not just that he's fast, he can pound away. And as you look in the league game summary, you can see that rushing total of Carolina, 235 yards. They're now dominating the total offense. Curtis Johnson with 137 yards. One touchdown. Curtis has it again. Curtis down to the 40, actually the 37-yard line before he's brought down. That was a counter style play that uh, is really effective. You get the defense going in one direction and then you pull the backside guard and tackle and you go back up in the other direction. Jack pointed out that uh, Johnson is an excellent inside runner as well as an outside runner. And of course he and Leon Johnson give Carolina two outstanding running backs. They haven't had two 1,000 yard rushers since 1983 but no school in America has had more 1,000 yard men than North Carolina. Six. Stanisek to throw. 
Looking upstairs, had a man open. That was Bucky Brooks, his first attempt in Brooks' direction during the day. William Strong was there for the coverage. Well, you tell that cornerback to be on the hip of the wide receiver. I think William Strong might have been in the hip pocket a little bit too far inside. Might have got away with a little bit of a bump right there. But pretty good coverage. Again, when you get down and pour down territory, Buddy Green and the defense is going to come after you. And they, Carolina must have checked to that to get that one-on-one -on -one route. Third and six. 28-14, North Carolina in the lead. Tar Heels have the ball. Here's Stanisek. Looking to the flats. It is complete to Marcus Wall. He's pulled down at the 32. He's got six yards. He's close to the first down. Dwayne Washington with the tackle. And it looks like he's going to have enough. When you have a team that is very blitz-oriented in certain situations on the field, as Coach Dooley pointed out, one of the ways you combat that is with your alignment. And that time, for the first time this afternoon, Carolina went with a true one-back formation with trips, three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. You tell the defense, okay, go ahead and blitz, but I'm going to find somebody short before you can get to me. And that's what happened. Rich Watson is back into the North Carolina lineup at fullback. Freddie Jones in the slot. Greg DeLong, the tight end, not available for the remainder of the day with a bruised knee. Stanisek, Watson. And Watson over the 30-yard line down to the 28. Daryl Beard in on the tackle along with Damian Covington. Well, NC State is getting in what they refer to as their stack defense, and that makes it very difficult to go up inside against. Normally, when you see the stack, what they like to do is throw out in the flats. That's Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator, and he's done a terrific job retooling that defense after losing some big players, including this year, Carl Reeves. Stands out at eight. Stand a sec on the option. NC State in pursuit. Mike Harrison looked into the floor. Lauren Pinkney and Ed Gallen also in the neighborhood. I mean, it hasn't gone as well for the Wolfpack here in the second half, but you consider that you lose a guy like Carl Reeves, you lose a guy like Mike Reed, who came out of school early, as well as the guys who graduated last year. It's remarkable how well this NC State team has retooled and been competitive on the defensive side of the football. And don't forget Atkins. He's been hurt, so he hadn't been at full speed also. Third down. 15. North Carolina with the football back at their own, back at the NC State 36. Quarterback draw, Stanisek. Stanisek lifts for yardage, might have it. Gets down inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. The tackle made by Allen Johnson. Well, that was an excellent call by the Carolina bench. He goes back, takes a three step drop, and runs the quarterback draw. NC State, as you can see here, dropped off. Excellent block that allows Jason Stanisek to get the needed yardage for the first down. Carlos Pruitt uh, was back on his heels a little bit when he had that block. You know, that's the second time today that Jason Stanisek's come up with a 20-yard gain on third down. Well, he had the big run for a touchdown last year at Keenan Stadium. Good block by Don Meredith on Carlos Pruitt. First and 10 at the 18 of NC State. Here's Henderson. Henderson behind a nice block, headed for the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina. and strikes for the second time today. North Carolina felt like what they built upon from last year would carry over into this season. They got off to the impressive start, played a good first half against Florida State, saw it slip away in the second half last week at Chapel Hill. They had fits and sputters in the first half, but were close. They came out here in the second half, and at least through the first almost 19 minutes, they've dominated. Here's the kick by Trip Pignetti. It is good. And North Carolina lengthens their lead. They have scored 25 unanswered points. And with 11.27 left to go in the fourth quarter, it's the Tar Heels leading the Wolfpack 35 to 14. In Raleigh, North Carolina has lengthened their lead 35-14. It's a 21-point edge over the NC State Wolfpack. 
And William Henderson going around the block of Sean Hawker, whose nickname is the Buffet Killer, goes in for the touchdown. My kind of guy. I like that one. He says my favorite fruit is free or bulk. <laughs> Whichever's available. <laughs> on the kick. Goins will get under it at the 20. And Otto Harris flew at one tackle. Here comes Goins upfield. And he has wrestled to the ground at the 31-yard line. The tackle made on the play by Doug Leonard. Got a couple of flags back around the 20, and I think you're going to get an illegal block. Chris Cotton ended up catching the wrong side, and the block from behind is going to again Coach talked about the great field position Carolina is at. NC State has had dreadful field position here in the second half. Let's go to the sidelines now, Mike Hogwood. Steve, while the news today is great for North Carolina, they have received some bad news about their tight end, Greg DeLong. I just spoke to Dr. Tim Tath, who's the orthopedist on this team. They have diagnosed his knee injury as a torn anterior cruciate ligament, and Dr. Taft says DeLong is now lost for the season and will undergo surgery in the next couple of days. Wow, just falling down, too. That's a shame. Ready to ACL. First and ten, NC State, they're back their own nine-yard line. Bracey Walker. Well, Harvey had uh, good protection, had plenty of time to throw the football, and had the receiver wide open. As you mentioned, just overthrew it a little bit. And Jack talked earlier about uh, field position. It's uh, it's such an important part of the ball game, such as this. You've got to be able to get that ball out a little bit. Dictates what chapters you go to in your playbook. Second down and ten. yard line to about the 16 not much there seven yards on the carry Jimmy Hitchcock hit on the tackle well the previous two incompletions by Terry Harvey the ball sailed on he wasn't quite finishing the ball so there with Hill wide open on the slant he lobbed that ball and it was almost too soft for Hill he, he had trouble hanging on to it Seven. It's good for the first down, and the NC State fans now start to cheer as Bill Harvey seems to find a rhythm. Well, you're exactly right. The NC State offensive line did a good job of picking up the blitz. They caught Carolina in man-to-man -man coverage, and that was Hitchcock covering. Excellent play. I believe that's the first first down of the second half for the Wolfpack. First and ten. Mason covering on the play. And they lined Oscar Sturgis, the outside linebacker, on the line of scrimmage and rushed him that time. And while he didn't get close to Harvey, he got close enough that Terry threw a ball a little too tall for Gary Downs. Second down and ten. Well, now you're up by 21 points, so you play that two deep zone, and you're real loose. You're very vulnerable to these crossing patterns between the linebackers and the safeties. Well, NC State's going strictly to a one back back, spreading them out all over the field. Here's Harvey. Fourth first down in the second half. Pass right through the hands of Brian Fitzgerald. It was there. Bernardo Harris covering on the play. Well, that was a little post pattern. They had been running a delay underneath and a post pattern, or I should say a flag pattern, broke to the outside, and it was wide open. I love that little corner flag route with the back out of the backfield because usually the linebacker is not able to stay with them, and Harvey delivered it, and the sophomore Fitzgerald just didn't come up with it. Second down and ten. Showing blitz, and now they come late with Harris. 
Yes, the pass complete to Goins. Covering on the play is Sean Boyd at the 50-yard line. Be a gain of five on the play. Terry Harvey seeing the late blitz, a delayed blitz by Bernardo Harris. You get that kind of situation, you sometimes say, make up your mind, either do it or not do it. He got caught betwixt and between and was not a factor in the play. Big third down call coming now for NC State. They still have plenty of time. They're down by three touchdowns. 35-14, but they need to keep this one alive. Harvey rushed and hit by Harris as he let it go. Bernardo Harris comes in and makes the hit. Well, that's uh, that's that delayed rush. They drop Harris back. He's stacked behind the defensive lineman of NC State. Then he comes up inside, and when he does that, he gets a big hit on the quarterback, Harvey. And here's the situation. NC State down by three touchdowns. Feel that a punt does them no good. Field position does them no good. They need to keep possession of the football and score. They loop Barnett to the outside to take the guard away, and Harris had a free path to Harvey. Fourth down and five. Harvey throws. Too long for Ray Griffiths. And North Carolina State gives up on downs. And that gives the Tar Heels a football back at midfield. So the, the gamble did not work for NC State. And the Tar Heels have the lead and the football at midfield. 35-14 the score. Why is the ball sailing on Terry Harvey for NC State? Watch his left leg, his front leg. As he releases this ball, look how straight that front leg is. If you don't get enough flex in that knee, you don't follow through, you don't finish properly, and that ball sails just out of the reach of Ray Griffiths, and they turn the ball over. You gotta get on top of the ball, get on your toes, and flex that front leg. This will be North Carolina's sixth possession of the football game three previous possessions. This is the fourth time they've started within three yards of midfield. And one time they started in NC State territory after recovering the fumble. Curtis Johnson, still running strong, gets it down to the 41-yard line and quickly picks up nine yards. Alan Johnson in on the tackle. Johnson replaced James Walker, who was ejected in that fracas in the final minute of the first half. Steve, the experienced offensive line of North Carolina is just coming off the ball and moving the smaller defensive front of NC State back. And, of course, Curtis Johnson hits up in there, and he carries an impact. It's a great trap blocking by Scott Felice and Sean Hawker today. Second down and one. Henderson flag on the play. He has enough for the first down. Lauren Pinckney in on the tackle, but can see what the call is going to be. Change your have to had, I think. Yep. And let's go to the sidelines on Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, things don't look good for NC State right now, but I've seen a lot of people in the stands with these cards. Now, we've heard of baseball cards and their stock car racing cards. Well, now they're college football cards. And they've come out with an NC State edition of all the players and statistics on the back. And uh, I think these catch on here with uh, NC State. It won't be long before we see everybody with these cars and kids be trading them back and forth. I want sideline reporter cards. And I want you to sign my card. That's right. Those will definitely be valuable. Those will be it's a vanishing species. Second down and about 11. Make it 12 as the penalty marked off against North Carolina. Watch how much time Carolina will be content to take now. They don't even break the huddle till there's 10 seconds left on the huddle clock. 8.26 on the game clock and rolling. North Carolina leading big here now, 35-14. Hand off up inside to Chris Watson. Watson getting the call today because Malcolm Marshall not playing. Pick up a five down to the 47. Mike Brown happy. This is a big game for North Carolina, and they hold on for eight minutes, and they'll break that five-game losing streak. I was streak. just going to say, Mac has yet to taste uh, the sweet uh, victory feeling against NC State. Well, today, they're getting a good dose of it right now. They'll avoid, and they'll, they'll keep on track, as a matter of fact, staying right behind Florida State. And Virginia, William Strong. 
tackling Curtis Johnson just shy of the first down. He gets to about the 42-yard line. You know, we talk a lot about Florida State, but we cannot ignore Virginia, who at last look, they were leading Duke by four touchdowns. Well, they have an excellent football team, and I think the big thing has been their quarterback. That was an unbalanced uh, line by the University of North Carolina. They got NC State to shift over a little bit to it, and then they ran the counterplay back into the short side, almost made the needed yardage for the first down. Again, that was a good call by the Carolina bench. Fourth down and about three coming. We also saw another example of the speed of Curtis Johnson because it looked like John Aikens had him cut off at the pass, and all of a sudden, see ya. <laughs> Liddell George is back to get the punt. Well, that's the thing that they had the big play football players. Curtis Johnson at tailback, Bucky Brooks at wide receiver, and then, of course, as you pointed out, Jack Stanisak making the right decisions on those option plays, and it really puts their defense secondary in a tough spot when they can fake that option and throw the pass off of them. You don't want to minimize Jason Stanisak's physical tools but it's it's really sometimes a guy who just meshes best with what's happening right now and not to say that Mike Thomas doesn't have the ability to achieve the same kind of mesh we saw that last year in Carolina's game against Duke Mike Thomas was phenomenal against the Blue Devils but so far here in 93 Stanisek has had a little bit better of it although it's nice to have a guy like Thomas as your relief pitcher isn't it but unfortunately Thomas is not available for the second half and Jay Boaz nails it a beautiful punt. That will go into the end zone. It's a 43-yard punt, but it had every reason to die inside the 10. Boaz playing in place of Mike Thomas, who has bruised ribs. So NC State will get the football back again. Down 35 to 14 with 7.26 left to go on the fourth. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. There's the situation. North Carolina leading 35 to 14 over NC State. We have 7.26 remaining in the football game, and NC State now goes to the shotgun. They need 21 points, they need them quickly. Terry Harvey has it blocked by Marcus Jones. Marcus Jones, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, Jacksonville, North Carolina, rather, making the play on Terry Harvey. That brings up second down and 10, stops the clock with 721 remaining. North Carolina steps out of conference next week to take on Texas El Paso. NC State goes to Clemson to take on the Tigers. Harvey. Shotgun again, too tall for Goins. Well, it's a good situation right now for Carolina. I mean, they get UTEP, a team they should be able to take care of. They'll host Wake Forest at Keenan Stadium. Then there's that big stretch where they'll tangle on the road with Georgia Tech and Virginia and get Clemson back home in Chapel Hill. Going up third and 10. NC State at their own 20. George, that's his eighth reception of the day after the 27-yard line. Well, that's a uh, tough situation for NC State to be in. You're in the shotgun. Carolina knows they're going to throw the football, and they're putting good pressure on them. And of course, Harvey takes a tremendous hit from the blind side on that on that play. Marcus Jones again delivering the pop. Fourth and two. NC State going for it once again. Well, batted once more. Was it Jones again for the second time today? Yes, it was. Oh. Well, that's that uh, Carolina lineman laying their ears back, and Jones from Jacksonville, North Carolina, is uh, letting know the North Carolina coaches know that he's on that squad and he wants more playing time. He was a high school All-American at Southwest Onslow High School, and he played like an All-American here in the second half. This season, Exxon and the ACC are spotlighting football players who contribute their time and efforts to community service. Our Exxon Community Spirit Award goes to Corey Holiday, a graduate and student wide receiver from the University of North Carolina. He does a lot of things in the community. And one thing
$1,000 donation to Exxon ACC Kids in College program will be made. The Exxon very well represented here today, enjoying the game. And so are our camera people who are bedecked. And Exxon and ACC paraphernalia. Second down and about eight now coming up for North Carolina. Once again, blessed with excellent field position. Stanistek still out there on the field with 6.08 left to go. North Carolina coming into this game 19th in some polls against NC State 17th. And off Leon Johnson. Johnson goes off the tail of Sean Hawker and down to the 21 yard line. Daryl Beard and Dwayne Washington in on the tackle for NC State. Leon Johnson was a quarterback in high school out of Freedom High in Morganton, North Carolina, but it was an option wishbone type of attack anyway, so he's used to cutting with the football and making those moves on the corners. Well, he made an excellent cut there, Jack, when he gave him one leg and then cut back on the inside of it. He, uh, he and Johnson, I can't get over those two tailbacks. They are excellent. Third down and about four. And off goes to Chris Watson. And Watson carries John Aikens with him down to about the 18-yard line, where he's going to be very close to another first down. John Aikens makes the Steve, this is one thing that the uh, Carolina coaches said coming into the ball game. They felt like they had to give the ball to their fullback up inside to make the option play go to the outside. And if they could keep those linebackers from running to the option and keep them honest by playing inside, they would be effective with the option play this afternoon. And Jason Stanisek has executed very, very well in the grasp several times with pitches. Fourth down and about one. North Carolina going for it here. They are shy of the first down. Trying to keep possession, keep the clock rolling. Here's Leon Johnson, and Johnson is brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Daryl Beard. What a play by Beard. And North Carolina State's defense holds. Tell you what, takes a lot of mental toughness when you're down in a ball game by 21 points and you know you're not going to win it. Real easy to just kind of give up out there. It takes that little extra to hang in there and make a stop like that. That's something that Buddy Green with his defensive staff and Michael Kane overall will try and build in the ensuing weeks with his Wolfpack club. Darrell Beard, the senior out of Fairfield, Alabama, 6'1", 258. First and 10, NC State working out of the shotgun for their own 19. In the vicinity where you would expect somebody be to be possibly uh, offsides. I don't think Carol, uh, NC State was ever set. Dead ball, false start, offense. So it's a false start against NC State, so that'll back them up to the 14. Well, they've had a tough go this second half. They have only had one possession outside of their own 25-yard line. One possession, and that was out on the 36. So NC State has really been operating out of a hole. We saw the Clemson score. The Tigers leading by only three in the third over Georgia Tech. in the grass of Brian Honeycutt, a freshman from Benson, North Carolina. Well, this field has been tilted all second half as far as NC State is concerned. It's been a downhill run for the Tar Heels, both offensively and defensively. Tough spot for Michael Kane to be in. The streak ends. Julie and I were talking about it yesterday. Both coaches were in a no-win situation as far as this one's concerned. Although Mac Brown's situation looks a little bit better with the anticipated win here. Gary Harvey throws to the flats, complete to Dickerson. And Dickerson's after the 20-yard line. It's a gain of 16 on the play, but it's going to be way short of the first down. Mike Morton in on the tackle, but they got some of it back, so it'll bring up uh, 
third and about nine. Ellis Dickerson was a tight end when he first came into the program here in Raleigh. They moved him to fullback. That's why he's wearing number 33, but they moved him back to tight end. He's behind Ryan Schultz with the uh, graduation loss of Neil Hour. They needed help with tight end. His first carry last year was a big first down and a big five. Here is a near sack avoided by Harvey. Harvey gets away from one, but won't get away from Harvey, from, uh, let's see, that's gonna be Mike Morton finally bringing him down. The first initial hit was made by Michael Payne. Well, again, that pressure by the Carolina defensive front is just uh, too much for NC State to handle, and uh, it's a tough day for Terry Harvey back there at quarterback. So Liddell George, who's played a lot in this football game, is back there in punt formation. Stephen Jerry back to get it for North Carolina. 2.15 left in this one. Beautiful kick by George. Fair catch called for by Jerry. This is the worst field position that North Carolina has had for the second half at their own 36-yard line after a 44-yard punt from the foot of Liddell George. It's North Carolina 35, NC State 14. The Exxon ACC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Exxon and its dealers and distributors who invite you to try high-performance Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. By Delta Airlines. With the industry's best overall record of passenger satisfaction, even business trips are a pleasure on Delta. By Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Winn-Dixie, the low-price leader. And by First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. Back at Carter-Finley Stadium, a very happy Tar Heel crowd on the far sideline. Squeezed into the corner of Carter-Finley, watching the Tar Heels shake a streak of five years. As they lead it 35-14, we have a new quarterback in the game. He's Tucker Perry in the ball game. Let's go to the sidelines, Mike Hogwood. Well, Steve, one way to sure tell you have a game in hand when Tucker Perry, number eight, comes in the game, and he's the second number eight who's played today. The first one was Chris Searcy, who I... Uh, kicked off a moment ago and uh, there's the other one we saw on the sidelines well, when you go down to the second guy for a number you know you got it well in hand there he is a sophomore he's from Coral Spring, Springs Florida he's got Maurice McGregor back there and Antoine Williams has his setbacks on second down about nine and the handoff goes to Williams Carolina State week, whichever way you want to put it, Coach Dooley, you've been in this situation before as many times when you were in Chapel Hill. It's there's one factor you don't need to worry about motivationally. <laughs> Just put, uh, put together your game plan, don't you? Well, this this game means so much from a standpoint of recruiting, and that's what they look for every year and uh, bragging rights for a year and. You know, it just means a lot. NC State has dominated this series for the last five years, and now Coach Mac Brown is going to get a taste of that victory that he's been waiting for since he's been in Chapel Hill. Brown, you've been through some big recruiting battles with NC State. We talked before, as Harry hands off on third down, we were talking before about uh, your battles, recruiting battles with Earl Edwards here at uh, NC State, the legendary coach of the Wolfpack. Well, that's always uh, the two state universities uh, competing for the outstanding athletes in the state. And I know that, uh, you know, it, it's been uh, pretty well equally divided. Coach Mac Brown has added a lot of speed to the University of North Carolina football team, and that's been a big difference. Oh, oh he got oh. Some, He didn't have a clue that was coming. He didn't have a clue. <laughs> the Gatorade bath that you'll take because that signifies your team has done something significant. Well, he deserves it. Yep. It's, it. you know, both of these coaches and programs have recruited very well. They both have eight starters in their starting lineup as North Carolina natives. Here are BMW players of the game for North Carolina. Curtis Johnson, who started the second half with a 50-yard touchdown run, part of a big yardage day for him, and Liddell George. 
course, eight receptions for 52 yards. He carried the ball some. He punted the ball some. He returned the ball some. Steve, you talked about the good recruiting and the players. Maybe the best measurement of the recruiting, the number of ACC honor rolls and academic ACC players on both squads. Jay Boaz with the kick. Liddell George back to get it. And he is brought down quickly by a host of Tar Heel tacklers led by Mike Morton, Bernardo Harris, and Michael Payne, and Rick Steinbacher on special teams. And NC State comes out one more time. Terry Harvey is going to be out there. Bernardo Harris gets chief credit for the tackle. But we're in the final 30 seconds of this one. And North Carolina will end a losing streak of five games. And Mac Brown. Mac was funny. He said, you know, we must be making progress in this program because now people are saying, when am I ever going to beat NC State? Of course, two years ago, they used to ask me, when am I ever going to beat anybody? <laughs> He's kept a sense of humor through it all and his pain off. Here's Harvey going long. Harvey puts it up for grabs and it's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Sean Boyd at the North Carolina 14-yard line. And Boyd plays to the Tar Heel faithful on the far sidelines as the clock stops with 17 seconds and the North Carolina offense will come out once more. The second half started all North Carolina. First play from scrimmage, Curtis Johnson, 50 yards for a touchdown. NC State got the ball back and fumbled two plays later. North Carolina kicked the field goal on the next possession after a short punt, an exchange of punts, and then another fumble. North Carolina put back-to-back -to -back touchdowns on the board in an 18-point run in the third quarter to put this one out of reach. Perry hands off to McGregor. And we have a big hit put on by Greg Janamore. Now the linebacker, excuse me, the linebacker just fired Steve on that play and caught the fullback. It's a wonder that wasn't a fumble. <laughs> In the meantime, that's the finish as the game ends and North Carolina stops the streak. A very important game for the North Carolina Tar Heels. 35-14 over NC State. Let's go down on the field where Mike Hogwood has Mac Brown. Yeah, soak with Gatorade, as you said, Steve. Well, you did it, finally. Well, Mike, this football team did it. I didn't do it, and they played so hard, and we didn't do as many things as we needed to well early in the game. We kicked too many field goals. We had the turnover down, but this team's got a lot of heart, and they kept coming back and fought hard, and I'm so proud of them. I think if we can continue, we've got a chance to be a good football team. You told me at halftime we want to go out and have some fun. I really felt like these guys came out and had fun in the third quarter, and the big play of Curtis Johnson, the 50-yard run to get you going, that's a great way to start a half. Well, it was, and we came off with a kickoff return in the second half, unlike Florida State last week where we got no momentum and had two turnovers to, to start the second half. And then we had 10 points in about three minutes span. And after that, I felt like we pretty much control the game. What does this do to your season now? You come off a tough loss from Florida State, and here you come and make another statement. It really shows something, I think, for this football team to bounce back with this kind of performance today. Well, we think so, Mike, and we feel like we got a chance to have a great year. we got to stay, uh, uh, or we've got to get well in a few positions with Mike Thomas being hurt. That hurts us at quarterback, obviously, and, and we're in a position with Greg DeLong getting hurt. But we've got to go back to work. and got El Paso coming in next week, and they'll be ready to play. All right, congratulations. Thank you, Mike. Mac Brown, winning coach today in this big rivalry, and let's go back up to Steve. North Carolina wins it 35 to 14 over NC State. Their record now is 4 and 1. They've nearly played half their season. The Wolfpack now at 2 and 1. And we'll be back with some final words here from Carter Finley in Raleigh after this word from your local station. Money doesn't grow on trees. There ain't no NC State by a score of 35 to 14 and that stops a five game losing streak at the hands of the NC State Wolfpack and 
Bill Dooley, you know what that can be when you get something off your back like that. And now, what kind? What does this mean for North Carolina in terms of what the rest of the season looks like? Well, I think it gives them great momentum. They're going into the University of uh, Texas El Paso. Then they have Wake Forest. They're going to get more momentum, and I think they can end up being uh, only having one loss on their entire schedule. And of course, Jack, the key now is to stay inside of not only Florida State but Virginia. That's right, Virginia. Impressive again today, leading uh, Duke, dominating Duke up in Charlottesville. So they're a team still to be considered with in the conference, and that's what Carolina and both NC State have to build for in the coming weeks. Well, the stats, of course, uh, look very much tilted in favor of North Carolina this afternoon. You take a look at them here, especially on the ground. That's where they wanted to do their work, Jack. Well, 300 yards rushing, the, the keynote, the 50-yard touchdown run by Curtis Johnson on the first play from scrimmage in the second half, and when State had the quick turnovers, all of a sudden they got in trouble. That's the other big stat. Four turnovers for NC State against a good team like Carolina. That's just too much to overcome. I no, can't give North Carolina the football anywhere near midfield, and NC State did that uh, four times this afternoon. Next week, on most of these same stations, you will see either Georgia Tech at Florida State from Tallahassee, or the NC State Wolfpack traveling to Death Valley to take on the Clemson Tigers. Check your local listings for the Exxon ACC Game of the Week. An outstanding afternoon of football here, won by North Carolina, 35 to 14 over North Carolina State here at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. Our thanks to John Madry, our statistician, Bob Kearney, our spotter, Kathy Campbell, our stage manager, and all all the rest of the fine people who bring you ACC football each and every week from throughout this region of the country. Jefferson Pilot Sports Production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. For my